Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, my voice is totally gone, but we'll still try to talk about how to tackle your pile of shame using this two by two value versus effort matrix. So yeah, here's everything miniature painting related that I own. Adeptus Mechanicus, Death Guard, Space Dwarfs, Space Elves, Fantasy Dwarfs, Goblins, Warhammer Underworlds, Star Wars Legion Rebels, Dungeons and Doggos, the best Albir miniature ever, a few more D&D models and some Lou Space Marines. So having all this laid out, you know what? It's actually not that bad. I mean, I've seen worse. But still, we need a plan because ultimately I'd like to finish most of these projects this year. In my career, I often use the very helpful uh, value versus effort matrix. And I believe it would also work perfectly in our miniature hobby. The value versus effort matrix is a decision-making tool that product managers use to prioritize projects based on their potential value and the effort required to complete them. It is a two by two matrix with value on one axis and effort on the other one. And like I said, I see some real opportunities to uh, use this for miniature painting as well. In miniature painting, I'd say the value is in how bad you want to finish it or how bad you have to finish it because of a tournament or a painting competition. And the effort is not only the time that it will take you to finish the project, but also potential investments like paints, tools. Maybe the army you're building is like a few hundred points short of what's eligible for a certain tournament. So you have to buy new miniatures, which cost money. Uh, you have to paint them up, which costs time. So effort goes up. Once you've estimated value and effort, you can plot each project on the matrix. Then you can cut it into the following quadrants. High value, low effort. These are your quick win projects. Uh, the best example of this is armies that are almost done. If you really, really have a problem with your pile of shame, you're struggling with it, these are the projects to tackle first. High value, high effort. These are your big bets. Um, awesome projects once they're finished, but you know it's going to take a considerable time to do so. The best example for this are new armies. Low value, low effort. These are your fill-ins. By doing them, you might not end up with like a sizable army, but these are the fun little painting projects you do in between that don't take a lot of time. And then we have low value, high effort. Finally, these are your time sinks or money pits. These are projects that will take a very long time to do, but create limited value. And this last one might not be very relevant to our hobby because if you don't get any value out of what you're doing, then you should not do it. It's, it's not your job. It's, it's a fun thing to do, I hope. And apart from that, I think there's always value in painting more because uh, you will become a better painter. But in general, if you're really struggling, uh, you should make these your last priority. So let's take all my work in progress projects uh, right now and, and, and put them on the matrix. For my quick wins, I have two. The Adeptus Mechanicus, since they are really almost done. It's a few Pteraxi to finish up and touch up the Dune Crawler a little bit more. And if I do this, I have a fully painted army ready for the battlefield. Big value, low effort. Another one is my Star Wars Legion a Rebel Force. Just like the Atmac, it's almost done and ready for the battlefield. I actually have a little tournament coming up, so there's huge value in that. Also, when I started painting these, I was opting for a tabletop standard, uh, doing mostly contrast paints and stuff, so probably easy to finish, right? So for my high value, high effort ones, my Leagues of Photon, Space Dwarfs. I've yet to assemble all the Hearthkin warriors and the painting completion is all over the place. Once these are done though, this will be my main 40k faction, so there we have some major value again. And let's not forget about the satisfaction of finishing an entire uh, Space Wars army in my own custom league color scheme. So big value, but big effort. There, there, there's lots to do. Another one of high value, high effort are the other dwarves, the fantasy dwarves. 
I've been painting the Battle for Skull Pass up on a stream recently and finishing these will be a major goal for me this year since I want to try the Warhammer Old World one day. Personally, finishing these up will be one of my biggest goals for this year uh, because these dwarves are very special to me. Uh, I made a little video about it, you can check it out right here. For the low value, low effort ones, it's pretty simple. These are the Warhammer Underworld Warbands that I have. And saying, saying low value doesn't really feel right, but this is based on the playability I can have with them. Uh, since I don't really play a lot of Warhammer Underworlds, these are just fun painting projects which are easy to finish up in a weekend or so, uh, like I did with my Sons of Valmorn last year. The same goes for most of my D&D miniatures. I love these Dungeons and Doggos, but other than having them on the shelf, I don't see a lot of playtime with them. So I already talked about how low value, high effort is not really relevant for our hobby, but if I had to put uh, something on the matrix, it would be the general idea of my Eldar army. One day I would love to have a mix of Harlequins and Eldar jet bikes to wreak havoc on a 40k battlefield. Just the idea of lightning fast units on a 40k battlefield, just it just tickles my fancy somehow. Before getting to that point though, there's lots to buy, lots to paint. I don't see it happening in the foreseeable future. So after all of this near mathematical approach to miniature painting, uh, the most important thing to measure, is, is it really measurable, uh, but is how much fun you have doing it. I'm currently working on the fantasy dwarves and these are not the low hanging fruit on the matrix. Using the matrix might help you finish projects uh, like I talked about in last week's video, but it's not your job, it's a hobby. So do whatever feels right. So now I'm going to get myself a cup of tea with lots of honey and try to not speak for a week. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. I will see you guys later. <coughs> Lord almighty. This is because of the stream. I had like... Yesterday we had a very nice stream. It was very busy. I talked for four hours straight. So there we have it.